Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and boy do I have something interesting for you towards the end of this video. Wowzers. That's all I gotta say. Or, I'll give you a hint. Okay, but let's start this off right. Today only is my understanding linked to, if you buy something on the platform, they're gonna give you a thousand dollars of worth of XRP. And so, if, if you've been thinking about um, getting some private equity on link to, I'll put a link to the dis, uh, in the top of the description of this video. Click on it and go to uh, link to. There's a, they'll give you a thousand dollar renies of XRP when you make a purchase or when you initiate a transfer, I think, to make, make a purchase. Okay, Eleanor Terrett is on it to this morning. Scoop, the private sector is embarking on a project to test the ability of U.S. market infrastructure to support a Fed-issued CBDC, the, D the DTCC, in partnership with the digital dollar. Project will work to measure the benefits of a CBDC across the U.S. market infrastructure and American society. Okay, now, um, we've been seeing, we after the, 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 um, the kid, I call him the kid on this channel, Jack Maulers was at, um, at um, the Bitcoin conference. And all of a sudden, after all these years of the Lightning Network not even working, all of a sudden, because he's got an idea, they're going to replace all of the work Ripple's been doing for the last eight or nine years, okay? Because the kid said so, right? So Ashish Burla, who is one of the adults in the room, um, did a little write up on this. Some, some, seeing some tweets comparing lightning based cross border payment apps to Ripple's on demand liquidity product with XRP. More players focused on this problem is a good thing for the industry, in my opinion. But let's clear some, clear up some misconceptions. Keep in mind that using digital assets is one component of ODL solution. Our team has built expertise in markets against super hard fiat, but a sheesh. They've got this orange, this really neat orange logo, and they've got um, dollar bills being defaced um, on the wall at the Bitcoin conference, and everybody's really excited about the product, even though it's slow, not scalable, expensive, and all this. So you can't be right that you, you guys have been running a business of adults for all these years, putting an infrastructure in place. You couldn't possibly be right, because these guys have cool logos, they, they've even got some QR codes where you can get some free Bitcoin. And they've got a lot of marketing. He goes on. The Wharton graduate, Ashish Birla, goes on. Keep in mind that digital assets is one component of ODL solution. Our team has built expertise in markets against super hard fiat destination currencies, PHP, MXN. We solved the challenges with liquidity to ramp up hundreds of customers over the years. Crypto markets have historically been more volatile than fiat, and delivering reliable FX rates with crypto liquidity takes takes time to hone and per perfect. As liquidity grows, the entire market becomes more efficient, cheaper to serve long tail. But a sheesh, but a sheesh, you can't you you can't order a pizza with XRP. We have pizza boxes, and and it's nationwide pizza boxes and you don't understand Ashish that money is stored energy Pompliano told us so I'm not going to finish reading Ashish's adult write up I'll leave it there okay next but I did want to show you this because Rand Nooner he's one of the little jerks in this space serious question if jo he he tweeted this the other day if Jack Mahler's implements what he presented at Bitcoin 2022 what he presented not what he worked on for the last eight to ten years just what he presented because that's what matters in bitcoin world and so anyway i won't read he's basically saying what's the use case for xrp and then i said if xrp is so irrelevant to these people why can't they get it off their mind fear 
The same fear that inspired the SEC suit. Same fear that prevents the crypto media from covering it like they do Bitcoin and Ethereum. Same fear that keeps it out of CNBC's mouth. Same fear that prevents the so-called crypto industry groups from defending Ripple or John Deaton. The same fear that makes Joseph Lubin rub his elbow when asked about XRP right after the Hinman speech. The fear is real and should be. Bitcoin and Ethereum proof of work have never worked. Not like XRP. That's the fact, Jack. And XRP, the standard productions, did his write up like no one else could. And he says, mentally impaired man thinks Bitcoin Lightning Network apps can compete with Ripple XRP ODL. <laughs> Breaking exclusive news. <laughs> that is a thumbnail because it's so funny. Now, um, I, I, this is after yesterday we had the DPP ruling. We'll get to that here in a sec. And I said, I repeat. We're never going to see those Hinman emails. I believe this is much worse than we think. What's going on at the SEC? Now, I wanted to make sure I covered this. CZ Binance tweeted this. When the Titanic sinks, little floats near it get dragged down too. But the floats will eventually come back up if they are untethered. Did he just make a statement about tether, folks? Does he know something we don't know? That's why I tweeted that. Now... Um, Stefan Hubermate, who's been doing a great job recently, um, or for a long time really, but he says another article that calls corruption by its name, and this is the second article in two days, um, and asks the intriguing question of whether ignoring Hinman's repeated breaking of their ethic rules doesn't point to fundamental corruption problem at the SEC. What if the SEC had knowingly overlooked Hinman's behavior? And I retweeted this and I wanted to make another point. Would love to see Freedom of Information Act for emails between Jay Clayton and the Ethics Department at SEC. Someone, someone, I'm, I'm assuming someone had to tell the Ethics Department to lay off Hinman. He, I mean, otherwise he just went out here and did this. But Jay Clayton has some of the same ties. Where's Jay Clayton in this? There's got to be a lot of, that. look. If I'm working in the ethics department and Jay Clayton's the SEC commissioner and I see what Hinman's doing, I go to Jay Clayton. That's what I do. I say, look, I want to make you aware, just to cover my butt, if nothing else. I want to make you aware, Jay. Commissioner Clayton, look what he's doing over here. I'll bet dimes to donuts, to quote Mike Novogratz, that, some, that they did go to Jay Clayton. And we need to see what his response was. Did he call them off? That's what we need to see. Now, this was, came from James Philan yesterday. Breaking the court has denied the SEC's motion for reconsideration of the DPP ruling and granted the SEC's request for clarification of that ruling. The SEC has identified no intervening, let me get my blinds here, has, has identified no intervening change of controlling law or other controlling decisions, da da da. Um, the SEC's assertion that the speech was intended to communicate corporation finances approach to regulating digital asset offerings is inconsistent with the SEC and Hinman's previous position that the speech was intended to and did reflect his personal views. They're having to, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. And the, and the judge, this is big because the judge called their sorry butts out on it. This is a big deal and it's, it's a very good thing and it's very refreshing. It lets you know that this judge is a good guy or a good girl, or a good lady. Okay, moving along. So we got the all the attorneys weighed in. Here's Jeremy Hogan. Judge Netburn sticks to her guns on the DPP issue and re-re-reorders the production of emails related to Hinman's speech. The order includes some uncharacteristic SEC chastising from the judge. I'm mirroring her stating that, that as politely as possible. The order is a little concerning because she allows redaction of parts my concern is that the parts of the emails that are most damning to the SEC, how will we know? Okay, um, but anyway, then there's this. John Deaton says, this is not just a win for RIP on XRP holders, but for the judicial system. After the March 2021 hearing, I said, we are lucky to get Judge Netburn. Some of you disagree, but I still believe it. The SEC now officially in the hurt locker. I like that. That sounds like a thumbnail too. Now, Eleanor Terrett spoke to John Deaton. 
and uh, on this latest development. And, and he, she said he tells the SEC that me, the SEC, is very unlikely to turn over the documents ordered by Judge Netburn and believes a settlement should take place within 90 days of Judge Torres affirming Netburn's decision. The SEC now has 14 days to file an, ob an objection to the decision to Judge Torres. All right. And then Nick Birafato from Link2 tweeted this out, which I thought was great. Settlement soon. And this, this is how we will all react when we when and if we get a settlement. Now, now I want to show you something interesting, folks. Are you ready? Now I'm going to show you something interesting. Remember this video yesterday where Laura Shin in her book, The Cryptopians, she said that she was at, she asked Vitalik Buterin about a guy named Thomas Greco, and when she did, he just whistled, and she said, this guy and some others are, were considered the shadow government at the Ethereum Foundation. And she said that people would, didn't even want to say their name, and they didn't even want to describe their personalities. And then we went and we showed you who this guy was. It's this guy, okay? And this is Vitalik Buterin, of course, and it's this guy. Now, let me show you something that was sent to me today. First, I wanted to make a point here before I get into it. You know, we talk about all the time about how Bitcoin and Ethereum have been given a free pass and they've been shown all this favoritism and it's this coordinated Wall Street effort all the way from the top with the media and the crypto industry groups and all that. We talk about that all the, the talking heads. But here's what's always, I've always scratched my head about more than anything is the, while the SEC suing Ripple, it's letting things like Dogcoin and Shibu Inu that are literally, admittedly formed around a joke. Dogcoin was. And they have all the look of pump and dump schemes that are they're just put together and then it's a marketing effort that makes it go up and then it collapses. I mean, there's not any, there never has, there, maybe there is now, but there's not any, there, in, especially in the origination of these things, they hit and it's just nothing but a marketing promo that drives them crazy and that's what gets the original attention and then maybe some developers start saying they're working on these things and all that. That's kind of how these things come. But if anything would get the attention of the SEC, it would be these types of things. Anything, okay? but they don't say a word and they don't do a thing, which is what leads me into this. And this, this was, um, by the way, let me get to here. Rob Licker provided me this information. So here we go. Do you remember this news piece? I do. Ethereum co-founder, this is back May 13th, 2021. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin donated $1 billion worth of Shibu Inu coin, a dog coin spinoff to COVID-19 relief fund in India. So it was just another, it was another typical media setup where they make Vitalik Buterin look like the good guy. Okay. A billion dollars worth of Shibu Inu. What a great guy. He gave this to charity, which is a tax write-off by the way. And then there's this, this Maddie. Um, let me see who this is. I don't even remember who this is. I don't know. So I'm at Coindesk. The Shibu Inu Vitalik India Relief Fund story really fascinates me. Dev creates meme coin. Remember that. A developer creates meme coin, Shiba Inu, gives 5% supply to Vitalik, who turns around and markets it by with this news story by itself. I mean, and other things, I think. Shiba Inu moons. Vitalik 5% is now worth a billion dollars. Vitalik donates the whole thing to the IRF. Money gets used to help with COVID India disaster, crypto in a nutshell. Well, now let's go let's go look at what Rob Licker sent me. Who is Ryoshi? See, I don't know anything about Shibu Inu and, and Dogcoin. I know Jack what's the guy's name? Jackson Palmer started Dogcoin as a joke. Ryoshi, this was one of the first things that was brought to my attention by Rob Licker. Ryoshi Shibu Inu was created in August 2020, dubbing itself the Dog Coin Killer. On 13th of May, Vitalik Buterin donated more than 50 trillion Shiba Inu, worth over a billion dollars at the time, to India COVID uh, Crypto Relief Fund, which is a tax write-off. 
Ryoshi is apparently the creator of Shibu Inu. Look at this video, Omasi Japan, okay, which is Omasi is, I guess, one of some kind of company that was created. It says, meet Vitalik Buterin and Thomas Grieco. That is the shadow government guy that Laura Shin uh, brought to light. Great job, by the way, Laura Shin. This is for you. Um, so this was sent to me by Rob. Next time, please ask Vitalik Buterin about Ryoshi. If he denies, show him this picture. No one who who this no one knows who this mystery person is. If you can help, it would be great. Then again, we don't want to spoil Shibu Inu's secret. Now, remember, Laura Shin said that th these people that were this supposed shadow government, they didn't want their names. They didn't want people to know they were at a conference. They were just standing there and didn't want anybody to say anything about them. So it's kind of a coincidence that they've got a mystery person at Shibu Inu, right? Here again, he is next to Vitalik Ryoshi. Now they're saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying this person is saying that this guy is Ryoshi. Does you recognize that face? I do. Let's go back and look at that face one more time. Right there. Now let's go back forward. He's This person saying that's... Ryoshi and that this is Jun. I don't even know who that is. Okay. There he is again. There's Vitalik. There he is. There's Vitalik. Okay. So let's move along. And then we get this. Ryoshi founder. Sheeb says the idea was evolved in Osaka during the Ethereum conference. DevCon here collaborated with Vitalik. Up spawned Shiba coin. There is a master plan. There he is again. I think this is the lady from, you'll see it in the next label. I think this is the one, Aya, from the Ethereum Foundation. And there's Vitalik. And there's your Shiba Inu. Okay? Then there's this one. Now, in this one, they're calling her, which is that, I think that's the Aya girl from the Ethereum Foundation. They're calling her Ryoshi, and they're calling him Shaitoshi Kusama. And this, this is a name that's also affiliated with Shiba Inu. Um, like, like it's, I don't know, some kind of developer or whatever. And then Rob Licker sent me this video. I haven't even watched the whole thing, but he directed me to this clip I'm about to play for you. Wait till you see this. Watch this, folks. Finishes with a rare photo of Vitalik Buterin in Japan, presumably during DEF CON in 2019. The man in the brown jacket is apparently Ryoshi himself. If this is true, then Vitalik may be the anonymous friend Ryoshi credits for creating the Shiba Inu smart contract and providing the initial ETH liquidity for SHIB on Uniswap. More importantly, it's not just Vitalik who's in that photo. Ethereum Foundation Director Aya Miyaguchi is also seen walking with the group, which presumably contains individuals of similar stature. Regardless of who Ryoshi is, it's clear that he has close connections to some very important people in crypto. And this means that he's not just some anonymous developer who came out of nowhere. All right. So we have that. And then I, I pulled this up not to play it for you, but I'm going to play it while I talk because I think it's important. So I just want you to think about this while you listen to old Joseph Lubin. Yeah, Mike, to this sorry, day, Mike's these this, whales will there be a limit on from the, the Ethereum the ICO are hidden, and the SEC is doing nothing about it. Um, to this day, they're all um, hidden. Um, to this day. Um, and now we, what I've just shown you um, is what um, looks um, like, I don't know, but what looks um, like um, the creation um, of Shibu Inu, um, what looks um, like um, Vitalik Buterin um, associating um, himself um, with it by name. What looks like the price skyrocketing in conjunction with that, and what looks like him turning around and getting a $1 billion tax write-off. So I ask you again, who are, the, who are the Ethereum disguised whales? Why is nobody wanting to know who the Ethereum disguised whales are? And where is the SEC? Remember, Ripple was completely transparent about what they've done with XRP. To this day, no one has ever seen, uh, ever heard who these disguised whales are. 
I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that there is an awful lot of stink going on here. And to say it another way,